video is a broad introduction to punch needle, which is a very traditional craft of rag rugging or rug hooking that's developed into um, something that we're seeing a lot of at the moment. Um, it's a really fun craft to do. And what you're doing is you're effectively creating loops of yarn that are trapped by a woven fabric that you're pushing it through with a specialist needle. So what you will need to, find, to have a try at this craft is you can either go for a full kit, um, which we now have for these stunning citrus fruits or the pomegranate, or if you want to um, have a go yourself separately, You'll need a hoop um, that can tighten up really nice and tautly. You will need a woven fabric, and ours is a pure linen. This is now available separately as well that matches the hoop size. And then you're going to need one of the um, needle punch tools. And these actually come as fully adjustable and interchangeable. So you'll get the tool itself, and then you'll get three different sized tips and that's so you'll be able to use it with not just toff double knit as i will be doing in this video and with the kits that we've just launched but also with our fine yarn as well for some very exciting things coming up later on so this technique creates two very differently sided fabrics. So um, what you're doing when you're punching these loops through is you will create um, a neater side um, where you're punching them through and then the loops will sit on what is technically regarded as the right side of the fabric. But then the opposite side is actually also really attractive. So this is exactly the same design transferred on from the schematic. And this is the looped side, so technically the right side. And this is the wrong side, the back side. And all we've done is we've flipped it around in the hoop um, when we finished so that we can finish it off um, with the other side facing. It really is your choice on which you like the most, or you could even vary them um, within one design or on your wall if you are displaying the different designs on your wall. So if you've got your kit or you've got the component parts separately um, in order to create yourself one of these hoops, let's put it together um, from start to finish so you can see what you do. So first you need to loosen up your hoop like that. Take your linen fabric and place it over the top of the hoop before putting this back on. And the important thing with this is to get it really tight. Um, so with other techniques like embroidery where you might have... Um, done our other embroidery kits it isn't as important that you get it really tight but obviously we are pushing quite a big needle through this fabric so it's really important to get it as tight as possible so to do that you can obviously tighten this up by hand but actually what you might want to use to get it really really tight is actually use a screwdriver and that means that you can just twist that even further you'll be surprised um, how much further you'll be able to twist it if you do use a screwdriver rather than just doing it with your hands so keep pulling it as taut as possible like that pull that fabric through all the way around so it's nice and even and then tighten it up once again And again, so you've got a nice tight base for your fabric in which you can work your needle punch design. And I find it easiest to actually work into the top of the hoop. So when we're looking at those two designs that we did here, um, do you see how they're actually both on the top of the work, but it's the other side facing? It's not that I would recommend working into the inside of the loop to get this one facing. Always punch through the fabric that's on the top, and then you can always flip it around before you finish the design off afterwards. So I'd always work like this one. So you're going to end up with the, the wrong side, the non-loopy side on the top of your hoop but then you can always just loosen it off and flip it round at the end before you display it if you do decide to go for the loops facing so once that's nice and taut what you need to do next is actually cut out your schematic and this is going to be a bit easier um, for this one to make sure you get it really accurate so um, cut round that circle so you've got that and you can insert that on the inside and the important thing to remember when you are printing it is to click that fit to size button um, so that you make sure that your schematic is exactly the right size to transfer onto your fabric then you can use either a heat fading pen and this is a um, 
a pen really commonly used in embroidery and dressmaking. Um, they're readily available, so a heat fading pen, or you can always use a pencil because by and large, we will be covering up all our lines anyway. All you need to watch is that you don't end up with the pen lines in the negative space. And what I mean by that is these citrus designs, what we've done is we've intentionally made the most of the negative spaces and where you see the fabric and you're not working the loops. That becomes the pith. Just make sure that you've not got lines going into that pith and that you then can't cover up afterwards. So the easiest way to do this is to put it against a, um, a window and then you'll be able to move all these lines onto the fabric that will then become your guide. So with that traced onto your fabric, it is time to begin. Now you can be as rough or as accurate as you want to be when you move across that design. I've done mine really roughly there rather than accurate because I know that then I will use, I guess, my own artistic license to follow roughly those lines. If you're someone who wants it to be very precise, then you'll find it easier to press that very firmly against the fabric and put it up against the window. So you'll be able to transfer that really accurately. Um, so your lines are in exactly the same place as the original schematic drawing. Now what we've done is we've put colour one and colour two onto the schema for you and all you need to pay attention to with this is when you are setting up your needle um, we might have done the colours at different lengths. So when it comes to setting up your needle in order to do your needle punch you'll have three different sizes within the bag. It's the largest one you need which is a three millimetre. We've also given you a two and a half and a two which would be great for working with our fine yarn later on. But the three millimetre um, will be the one that you need for the double knit. And then what you need to do is this one you won't need a screwdriver for, you can just set this by hand, but again, make sure it's nice and tight, is you take your end and you insert it into the handle like that, making sure that you've got the end with the eye and the bevel. So the bevel is the back. These are words that I'll be referring to when we do the techniques later. So the bevel is the back, the eye is the front. Um, make sure that your eye is at the tip. And then when it says to set it up to a certain length, and that's what's going to dictate how deep the pile is on your design, um, say it says three centimetres, you'll be measuring from here to the eye, which would be three centimetres. And the longer the loop length, the more yarn something will use. So do make sure that you're setting that quite accurately. Otherwise, you might find that it's eating a lot more yarn than you planned. So say it's two centimetres, you do it exactly like this. From the handle to the eye length, that is two centimetres. You twist that into place like that as tight as you can get it, and that is your needle set and ready to use. So the last thing you need to do is thread this up, and in order to thread your needle up, you use your copper wire, which also comes within your kit, like that. So you bend that in half, like that. Push that in through the eye, and then down the needle until it comes out of the bottom. Like that. Then all you need to do is put your yarn in through there. So open up that loop at the bottom, put your yarn in through there, like that. And then pull that back up through your needle and through the eye. And that is your needle set up with your depth. So that's your depth of your needle is the eye to the handle. And then that's threading it up, ready to begin. So before we begin, um, let's just talk a little bit about um, a few tips on holding the needle. So the most important thing really is about direction of travel. So when you've got the yarn coming through like this, um, the eye, so the small circle where the yarn is coming out, needs to be behind the stitch, behind the direction of movement, where the bevel will be open, that's leading your direction of movement. And that means that the yarn will stay lovely and loose under tension and your loops will go with you. Now, the other thing to remember is that your yarn can't be taught. So what you might want to do is roll off a little bit of yarn before you do a section so that your yarn remains nice and loose because your loops won't be able to form properly if it comes under tension because it catches you up. 
Now, when you first go through a line, and I'm going to do this line here, what you need to do is push that right in and through to the other side. And to get us a nice, neat start, just go to the other side and pull that end absolutely through. So we're starting from what will be the loopy side, the side that becomes the back of your fabric. And then all you need to do is move to kind of two, um, so two millimetres to five millimetres away from where you came out of the fabric in your direction of travel. And this is back to this needle. Do you see how I've got the eye on my right hand side in this example and the bevel open on the left hand side? That means that I need to move across in the direction of my bevel. Now, it's going to be personal preference as to whether you want to twist the um, needle or twist the loop when you change the travel, but let's just do a straight line to begin with so you see what I mean. So you push right through, you come back out, and the trick to keeping it really neat is the fact that you want to avoid taking the needle off the fabric as much as possible. So you punch it through like that, down to where the handle totally goes through the other side. So you see it's come through the back like that. Then what you need to do is when you bring that back up nice and gently, you move away, but don't pull the tip of the needle a long way away from that fabric. Keep it almost in contact with the fabric and then push it back through again. So because I'm doing a line going in one movement like that in one direction of travel, you see how I've got the um, bevel facing my left, the eye facing my right, and I'm following that. And I would move my hoop around with me so I don't actually need to twist my needle in a different direction. But say I wanted to, say the line that I was doing suddenly was gonna cross downwards like that. What I'd need to do would be to change direction when I'm down in the fabric. So you could twist your needle like that, and then you could always change direction and follow that coming down the fabric that way, making sure that it is your eye that tracks with you when you change direction. Now, if you go wrong, or like I did there, I put you in an extra line in a different direction, all you need to do is pull it backwards like this. So it's really easy to reverse your steps. If you do happen to get a loose loop that you're not happy with, or you, you went on a different line, and what it'll leave you with is some little holes in the fabric like that. But all you need to do, because it is such a, a nice, natural, loose weave, is just rub it like that with your finger and you see how um, it's completely closed up again so you're ready to go. But when you need to restart, to make sure that you get a nice, neat restart, pull that nice and taut back to that position where your needle's not really leaving your fabric and then you can just go back along to your next stitch like that, moving in one direction. Now, the back of your fabric when you turn it over, when you do this first line of stitches, they will look quite gappy and spread out. But what we're going to do is um, go all the way around that line. And then when we come back, we'll be working them underneath. And you almost need to think about a kind of brick formation, like a brick wall. When we come back and we work our stitches underneath, we want to be going from the middle of one to the middle of the next one. So we're almost putting the line of stitches underneath in the middle of those, and that'll give you a really dense closed fabric of loops on the other side. So to get a nice dense pile, and um, this is where I talked a little bit about that brick formation before, what you need to do is come, so I'm, I'm going to fill in the gap above on this design now. So I'll come in and I'll go into the middle of the stitch that I've just done. Um, and one thing just to say again out loud, because it is probably the most important thing to make sure that these loops stick, is whenever you're punching this through your fabric, make sure that your handle goes right in until it touches to make sure that the loops are actually staying in position in the fabric. So come out and then go into the middle of the following one like that and that's how you would then start to fill up the round above it is by going into the middle of the stitches that you've already worked and that will put the loops in positioned and spaced out really nicely on the other side so you get a nice dense um, fabric now let me just show you a little bit on um, a different design here the kiwi and um, just to show you how you then approach doing the designs so what we've done here is we've gone round the middle first 
um, and started to fill those in, gone round the outside. And you see it's almost like contouring on um, an ordnance survey map, the approach of going around the circles to fill in the spacing. It really is a bit like colouring in um, with the yarn. So it's your choice in terms of how you want to do it. But the neatest effect will be to continue moving in circles rather than necessarily moving up and down. So depending upon the design that you're doing, um, you'll find that you might have to work different lengths of loops. And what we would recommend, rather than readjusting your needle all the time, is do the, if something say is all three centimetre, do all those segments first, then you can readjust your needle and do all the two centimetres afterwards. But what you um, need to do then, the last thing you need to be able to do to do that is to actually finish off a section. So say you've finished everything that you want to do in that colour and you want to finish it off punch your needle through to the loop side so you've pushed it through so it's on this side where the loops are if you actually cut your yarn at that stage like that then your needle remains threaded up so you can pull it straight back out to use again if you are using the same colour and then all you need to do is I cut that end nice and short anyway so it's sitting just under the pile and you can just trim down the end that we started to being around the lengths of the loops and that will disappear into your fabric. There's no need to do anything extra there. That means that you can then um, readjust your needle length if you need to, change the size. You'd have to rethread it if you were going to readjust to a different length or if you're using a different colour. But if you're just going to go for a different um, length of loop but in the same colour, it is simple as loosening it off, measuring it again and setting it at that and then retightening it and then you're ready to go again on the different loop length. So once you've finished your whole design and you're ready to display it on the wall, what you actually need to do first is make a decision about whether you've fallen in love with the loop side um, or the backside, the side that you've been staring at while you've been doing the stitches. Decide which one you love more. Now, if you decide that it is this side that you want to face forward in your hoop, what you'll need to do is untwist that, flip it over fabric wise and put it back into the hoop. And that'll mean that you can display it that side forwards. Because once you do the next bit, you won't be able to then turn it around on the wall. And that's just to cut this fabric and then gather it in. So all you need to do to do that finishing, once you've got the side facing forward that you want to be, is you just cut it down with your scissors um, to kind of like two centimeters centimeters out from the hoop like that and just do a running stitch through those ends like that and pull them taut and that means that you won't see that fabric that hoop is then ready to hang on your wall and you can simply put it onto a nail or a pitch hook through the loop at the top